down the top 10 living dead of the animal kingdom. Those animals that look like they bit the dust, and yet they're still very much alive. Discover how easy it is to come back from the grave when the living dead are taken to the most extreme. Earth is a planet of extremes. Extreme places. And extreme animals. But some animals are more extreme than others. Join us as we count down to find the most unusual and the most extraordinary on Animal Planets, the most extreme. Number 10. Everyone's heard the tale of Sleeping Beauty, a princess trapped in a spell who lay in suspended animation for a hundred years. Well, in the natural world, there are real Sleeping Beauties. These creatures look dead, but are actually alive. As we search for the animal that stays paralyzed for the longest time, we'll discover that these sleeping beauties require more than a kiss from a handsome prince to bring them back to life. Come on, wake up, wake up! You lazy good for nothing! Come on, wake up! Our first contender is no Prince Charming. It's an animal that usually scares the living daylights out of us. Most creatures know not to mess with a snake. But not all snakes are big and scary. That's why one serpent has come up with a very different way of getting out of trouble. Even a little kitten can be dangerous for a hognose snake. First, it acts tough like its bigger cousins. But when that doesn't work, it fakes its own death. The snake fools predators into thinking it's been fatally wounded by deliberately rupturing blood vessels in its mouth. And it produces such a foul stench that even flies are fooled into thinking it's dead. Only after the danger's passed will the snake return to life. Returning from the grave is a great way to fool predators. It's also become a source of countless horror movies. The most famous of all the living dead are... Zombies. While Hollywood has had fun with these nightmare creations, for believers in voodoo, zombies are no laughing matter. On the island of Haiti, a voodoo priest could transform someone into one of the living dead as the ultimate punishment. Break the community's code of good behavior and you'd end up as a zombie. Meet Francina. She's officially dead. This is her death certificate. It was signed five years earlier. But now Francina's returning to her stunned family. They were convinced that she was dead. They had buried her in front of the whole village. And yet.
yet here she is, being led to see her own grave. Francina believes that the reason she's alive today is that she'd been turned into a zombie. Francina had been punished by a voodoo priest. She was given a drug that's said to contain minute traces of a nerve poison estimated to be 270 times deadlier than cyanide. Francina entered a state of suspended animation, which is why her family believed she was dead. Shortly after her funeral, in the middle of the night, Francina believes that she was dug up and revived by the voodoo priest. She was then taken to a plantation where she worked as a zombie for three years before finally escaping her punishment. While Western scientists are still debating how human zombies are created, there's no doubt that the living dead are among us. In the natural world, all kinds of animals, including snakes, have found ways of becoming real-life zombies. Our first contender, the hog-nosed snake, is just an amateur at playing dead. Coming up are creatures that can stay in suspended animation not for minutes, but for years. Number nine. Our next contender would definitely win the Academy Award for best performance as a dead animal. Because when it feels threatened, an opossum plays possum. The opossum is number nine in the countdown because it enters a voluntary coma as wildlife educator Dave Ryherd explains. When opossums feel threatened, say if a hungry bobcat or coyote wanders in their direction, they have the ability to play dead. And they'll roll on their side, flop out their tongue, and stay in an almost catatonic state. They've been known to stay in this condition for up to six hours before. And no amount of prodding, poking, or pinching will make them wake up until they're safe. The possum is relying on the fact that most predators only like to eat fresh meat. So, if the possum acts as if it's already dead, maybe the predator will think its body is already rotten. It'll leave the possum alone and go in search of fresher prey. Playing dead obviously has advantages for the possum. But there are no benefits for the one in 2,000 Americans that suffer from narcolepsy. This mysterious disease causes people to fall asleep at dangerous or inappropriate times. At the UCLA Sleep Disorder Center, the seriously sleepy can seek help. Patients are wired up to record how they fall asleep. They're monitored to collect a variety of information, including their brain waves and eye movements. That's because researchers want to find out when the patient enters the dreaming stage of sleep, characterized by rapid eye movement, which gives it the name REM or REM sleep. It takes most people about 90 minutes to enter this stage. However, people with narcolepsy fall almost immediately into REM sleep. And what's worse, fragments of this dreaming sleep can occur during the day when the sufferer is awake. When you consider that during REM sleep, our muscles are immobilized and dreaming occurs, it's not surprising that narcolepsy is associated with paralysis and hallucinations. At present, doctors can treat the symptoms of narcolepsy, but are still speculating about the cause of the disease. 
scientists are also unsure just how the opossum can drop in and out of a coma in times of danger. It's certainly a most extreme defense mechanism that works well on everything except automobiles. Playing possum isn't a good idea on a busy highway. For our first two contenders, playing dead is all just an act. But as our countdown continues, we'll discover that not even Hollywood could imagine the horror when animals are invaded by real-life body snatchers. And why would anyone want to have shrew spit injected into their face? Number eight. Not all the animals in the countdown choose to become part of the living dead. Sometimes they become... The incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies. Some animals spawn the undead for their own selfish reasons. And even one of the most terrifying animals on the planet is powerless to resist. You'd have to be crazy to mess with a tarantula. These big, hairy spiders are definitely the creepiest of the crawlies. They're armed with huge fangs and a potent venom. And yet there is an animal that specializes in hunting these massive spiders with the sole aim of turning them into the living dead. The poor old tarantula is number eight in the countdown because it can be turned into a paralyzed zombie for several days. All it takes is an encounter with one of the scariest animals in the deserts of the American Southwest. Meet the tarantula hawk. It's a parasitic wasp that has no fear of massive spiders. The female wasp is armed with a venomous sting that can paralyze a spider in seconds. And now, things get nasty. She drags the helpless spider into its own burrow. Then, she lays a single egg on the spider's abdomen and seals the chamber. When it hatches, the larva sticks its head into the paralyzed spider and sucks on tarantula juices, avoiding the vital organs to keep its host alive for as long as possible. It's a terrible way to die. No wonder some people are morbidly afraid of being buried alive. In the past, people had good reason to be worried. Back then, a number of illnesses could cause patients to slip into a coma. Doctors of the day lacked the equipment to be 100% sure that their patient had passed away. According to one particularly sad story, back in the 1850s, a young South Carolina girl died of diphtheria. Her coffin was quickly interred in the family's mausoleum. Later, when one of the family's sons died in the Civil War, the tomb was opened again to admit him. There on the floor, just behind the door, was a tiny skeleton. No wonder some people specified in their wills that they be buried with guns, knives, or poison should they find themselves waking up six feet under. Unfortunately for the tarantula, there's no easy way out of its own living hell. Thanks to the tarantula hawk's venom, the spider stays alive 
but paralyzed as the wasp larva slowly eats its fill. Eventually, only the tarantula's withered husk will remain, forever buried in its lonely grave. So far, we've seen a possum that plays dead, and a wasp that spiders dread. But as our countdown continues, we'll discover how an ant is turned into a zombie by an animal that lives in its brain. And later, we'll learn that a mummy has no brain at all because it's been hooked out its nose. That's coming up on Animal Planets, the most extreme. Number seven. The next contender in our countdown of the living dead is already buried underground. It's the earthworm. Barring accidents, a worm can live for more than five years. But these earthworms are as good as dead. They're still alive, but they're virtually paralyzed. They're number seven in the countdown because they can remain in this suspended animation for several days. And it's all because they ran into the killer shrews. In Hollywood, the killer shrews were as big as dogs with saber-tooth fangs and a deadly bite. In reality, things are a little different. Real shrews are small and seldom seen. But they really are terrifying monsters if you're a worm. That's because shrews are one of the world's only venomous mammals. Their saliva contains a potent poison. It doesn't do much harm to humans, but it will turn their prey into the living dead, as shrew biologist Dr. Joseph Merritt explains. Shrews have a really nifty way to deal with winter shortage of food. Sometimes they paralyze their prey they take it to an underground cache. It's fresh, it's immobilized, and it is alive, and they feed on it for three to four days. The neurotoxins in shrew saliva work on the nerve cells, paralyzing the prey, sometimes for more than two weeks. And in an interesting new plot twist, Shrew venom is being injected into not only earthworms, but humans. The fastest growing cosmetic procedure in America today is Botox, with more than 1.6 million procedures carried out every year. Botox is actually a purified form of a bacterial neurotoxin and works by paralyzing the muscles that cause wrinkles. But new research may provide a different treatment for the wrinkled using the venomous saliva of a shrew. Canadian biochemists have identified and synthesized a chemical from shrew venom. Called sericidin, it paralyzes nerves, making it potentially useful to treat migraines, neuromuscular diseases, and even wrinkles. So, one day soon, you might have the choice of being injected with Botox or an extract of shrew spit. Of course, worms have long recognized the paralyzing power of shrew venom. Once they're bitten, there's no escape for these living dead. But if you think being eaten alive is a horrible fate, just wait till you see what happens to the next animal zombies in the countdown.
number six. Our next contender has been attacked by an animal that could have come straight from a science fiction movie. It's a parasitic life form that invades the brains of other animals, so they enter a state of living death. These things take over a man's mind? He becomes a, a robot? A machine taking orders? It's an adventure that will burst your blood vessels with suspense. See the brain eaters. Real life brain eaters can be found down on the farm. Luckily, they terrorize not humans, but ants. When winter comes and the temperature starts to fall, most ants move out of the grass and down into their nests underground. But some ants are different. They're like zombies. Their bodies are still alive, but they're under the control of an animal that's taken over their brain. The real brain eater is a parasite that's lodged in the ant's head. The ant is still breathing, but paralyzed. Somehow, the parasite can make the ant climb to the tip of a leaf and clamp its jaws onto the blade of grass. In cool temperatures, the paralyzed ant can remain hanging onto the grass stem for up to eight weeks. But this is just the beginning of one of the most complicated life cycles on the planet. Ants don't usually cling to the tips of grass because these are the bits that get eaten by mammals like rabbits. This is bad for the ant, but it's exactly what the parasite wants because when it gets eaten, it breaks out of the digestive system and into the liver. Here, it grows into its adult form, a parasitic flatworm called a liver fluke that feeds on blood. But now it has to get back to the ant. So the mature liver fluke produces thousands of eggs every day. Incredibly, these eggs only hatch if they're eaten by a snail. Phase two begins when the egg hatches and the parasite moves into the snail's breathing cavity. It's so irritating that the snail covers the parasite in slime. Eventually, there's so much mucus that the snail has to cough up the slime ball. And it just so happens that snail snot is one of the favorite foods of the ant. It's time for phase three, where the parasite changes again and moves into the head, where it takes control and turns the insect into bunny chow. Unlike the poor old ant, at least our next contenders voluntarily move in and out of a state of suspended animation. Their stories have a happy ending, unlike any ant that gets caught up in the invasion of the brain snatchers. As soon as our last two contenders were turned into zombies, they were doomed to a horrible death. But things are improving for the animals coming up in the countdown, even if they've been frozen solid. And we find out why some people freeze their pantyhose at minus 300 degrees. That's coming up on Animal Planets, the most extreme. Number five. Back in the Middle Ages, people thought that when it started to snow, all bears would die. That's because when winter arrived, the bears would mysteriously disappear. It was such a miracle when they came back to life the next spring that bears became a symbol of regeneration and new life. Today, we know that bears don't die in winter. 
they just head underground. Bears are number five in the countdown because they can spend the winter in a state of suspended animation. They can stay in their den for up to six months. During this time, they don't eat, don't drink, and don't even go to the toilet. It's a form of hibernation, as wildlife biologist at the Grizzly Discovery Center in West Yellowstone, Gail Ford, explains. The hibernation is an adaptation that the animals made to the lack of food. Instead of the cold or the lack of light sending them in, the animal, the bear, developed the way of, if there isn't any food, you can just go to sleep. For bears, hibernation is the perfect solution for avoiding the harsh winter. Imagine if you could sleep for six months solid. You'd save a fortune on food bills. However, there's one man who's supposedly been in hibernation for more than a thousand years. His name comes from the Celtic word art, which means bear. Was the legendary ruler of England, King Arthur. According to some stories, Arthur wasn't killed in battle. The once and future king lives on, asleep in an underground tomb. Some people say he lies in a cave awaiting the time when he's needed again. One day, he's supposed to wake up from his long hibernation. When the king returns, England is supposed to regain its former glory. While the English have been waiting a long time for the return of their king, bears only have to wait for the arrival of spring to come back from the dead. No one knows just how the bear manages to sleep for six months without food or toilet breaks. But if you think that's extreme, our next contender also sleeps through the winter, but in temperatures so cold that it freezes solid. Number four. This is liquid oxygen. At about minus 300 degrees Fahrenheit, anything dipped in here will get the world's worst case of frostbite. But that doesn't stop people paying to be frozen solid in the hope that future technologies will be able to bring them back from a chilly grave. The possibility of life after death is explored in Phoenix, Arizona by the Cryonic Society. They believe that cryobiology, the freezing of biological matter, is the answer. They propose freezing bodies in cold storage capsules. Scientists are mostly skeptical. However, cheating death is nothing new for the animal that's number four in the countdown. It can be found high in the mountains of New Zealand. In summer, it finds shelter under broken slabs of rock venturing out at night to feed. It's a flightless cricket called a weta. It may be a vegetarian, but it's one tough insect with an armor-plated body and massive jaws. And like all insects, it's cold-blooded. So when the temperature drops, the weta can't generate heat to keep warm. Even though it hides deep in crevices in the rock, up here, it can get very cold indeed. But this doesn't worry the Weta. It's such a cool customer that it simply freezes, solid. Its heart stops beating and all brain function ceases. It can survive temperatures down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit, even when 82% of the water in its body is frozen. 
the weta is the largest insect in the world that can survive being frozen. It's number four in the countdown because it can spend several months as a popsicle. Strangely enough, all kinds of objects can benefit from a stint in the deep freeze. This is no ordinary freezer. It uses liquid nitrogen to chill not insects, but instruments. It's part of a treatment developed by a company called TechSpec to freeze things like razor blades, golf clubs, and even pantyhose. The company claims that once objects are thawed out, scissors stay sharp longer, pantyhose are tougher, and golf balls travel further. The theory is that extreme freezing makes the microstructure of the object's molecules more uniform, relieving stresses and producing a more consistent and uniform material. Thawing out a golf ball is one thing, but defrosting a living animal is another. Yet, when the weather warms up, after weeks of suspended animation, the weta simply comes back to life. Scientists are still unsure exactly how the weta manages to stop ice crystals rupturing the cells in its body. So it will be some time before we can cheat death by jumping in the deep freeze. Our last two contenders turned into the living dead as a way to survive cold winters. Some animals do the same thing in the desert, even if it means being buried alive for seven years. And could it be that our next contenders hold the answer to long distance space travel? Find out next on Animal Planets, the most extra. Number three. In some parts of the world, drought can be devastating, especially if you're a small fish in a little pond. As the water level drops, most fish are left gasping for breath, their gills unable to extract oxygen from the air. But our next contender has come up with a way of coping with drought. It's a fish that virtually dies for up to four years. This is a lungfish. It gets its name because, unlike other fish, it can take in oxygen directly from the air. So when it runs out of water, the lungfish digs down into the mud. It coats itself in mucus, which dries into a leathery cocoon where it can wait out the drought. Unfortunately, there's another use for dried river mud. The lungfish doesn't worry about being built into a brick. It shut down so many systems that it's virtually dead. Being buried in the desert is nothing new. More than 4,000 years ago, some humans knew it was an excellent way of preserving the dead. And since no Egyptian wanted to spend eternity looking rotten, those who could afford to had their bodies painstakingly embalmed. Which is how they created the mummy. To make a mummy, you had to remove most of the internal organs and preserve them in jars. 
The heart stayed in place because it was thought to be the center of intelligence. A special hook was used to pull the brain out the nose. Then, salt was used to dry out the body before preserving it with resin and hundreds of yards of linen. Now the body was ready to enter the next world and come back to life. Back in this world, the only way that a mummy could return as the living dead is thanks to the imaginations of Hollywood scriptwriters. However, there is one animal that can emerge alive from the sands of the desert. Even after four years of drought, a little rain is enough to soften the bricks and to awaken the lungfish so that it can dig itself out of its muddy coffin. The lungfish is an extraordinary survivor. But there's another desert dweller that can last even longer without water. Number two. Beneath a dry lake bed in central Australia, there's a frog that's been buried alive for seven years. The burrowing frog sits as if dead, wrapped in a waterproof cocoon of old skin cells. It's lowered its metabolism by 90%. Yet over all this time, it doesn't lose muscle mass or strength, unlike humans. As any astronaut knows, when it comes to muscle, if you don't use it, you lose it. Normally, you're not even aware of your muscles lifting your body against gravity. In space, that constant muscular work is removed. That's why, despite rigorous workouts, astronauts return to Earth shockingly weaker than when they left. After only 11 days in space, muscle fibers may shrink as much as 30%. And so researchers in Australia are investigating how the burrowing frog can sit motionless for years and not lose any muscle mass. Perhaps one day, a tiny frog will provide help, not just for astronauts, but also bedridden patients and the elderly. But in the meantime, the frog is already a lifesaver for the Aborigines. They know that all it takes is a gentle squeeze to access the emergency supply of drinking water stored inside the frog's bladder. The burrowing frog may be an extraordinary survivor, but it still can't compete with the animal that's number one in the countdown. We've seen the nine contenders. They've found ways to come back from the grave. Only one animal is a more extreme example of the living dead. It's number one, and it's coming up next on Animal Planet. Number one. If we were like the animal at number one in the countdown, we really would be Mr. Invincible. We'd be able to survive temperatures as low as minus 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And as high as 300 degrees. We could withstand 1,000 times more radiation than any mortal. But most incredible of all, we'd be able to survive without any water 
for 120 years. So what is this animal with superhuman powers? Meet the water bear. Normally, this tiny animal waddles around on its four pairs of plump little legs, sucking the juices out of moss. It doesn't look very tough, but it can survive the harshest conditions because it basically curls up and dies. Let's say that things start getting too dry for a water bear. Somehow, it can lose 99% of the water in its body, retract all its legs, and become practically indestructible. That's how it can survive such extremes of cold, heat, radiation, and even in a vacuum like that found in space. The water bear is number one in the countdown because it can survive in this state of suspended animation for a long, long time. The record is held by water bears taken from a dried out moss specimen stored in a museum in Italy. When researchers added distilled water to the sample, they were astounded to see water bears swimming around. They'd been lying in suspended animation for 120 years. Researchers are now studying the water bear in the hope that one day we can sleep our way to the stars. Out of all the life on planet Earth, no other animal is better suited for the rigors of long distance space travel. After all, a water bear can come back to life after being more or less dead for more than a century. And that's why, when it comes to the sleeping beauties of the natural world, the water bear really is the most extreme.